Greetings and salutations everyone and welcome back to another of my videos. My name is Doreen Reed and I make content on things that are educational, creative and cultural. Now, the last video I made, I was talking about um, some of our patwa terms that are very much connected to our African ancestries, that the words are coming out of Africa and in some instances some of them are still used in that space and so I gave you 10 words today I am going to take you through another nine terms or another nine words that are in our patwa day-to-day -day, um, language that is connected to our African space so before I get straight into the first one, I just want to say to you, if you're watching and you've not yet subscribed, what are you waiting on? Just go right ahead, do the right thing. Just hit that subscribe button. And of course, while you're at it, just give the video a thumbs up. All right. And if you watched the last video and you did enjoy it, just put it in the comment section that you watched the last video. So I know how many of my subscribers, and even if you're not a subscriber, I know that you would have watched that video in part one so let's get straight into this part of the video the first word we are going to look at is pato pato now pato is also from the 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 akan language the term pato is from the akan language and it means owl and we know that that is that bird that we see at night time yes that is all over the place we only see it at night and you know you have a way to tell people that they're ugly like pato that's a Jamaican thing to always say to people, you're ugly like pato. Yes, so the term pato is actually an African word. Number two is the word juk. Juk. Juk now is not the African, the Akan language like the others. Juk is a part of the Fula, F-U-L-A, the Fula language. Yes, and it means poke. So just like we always hear people say, oh, you juke me na me yai, or you're going to juke out me yai, or somebody juke me na me side. The term juke is actually an African word out of the Fula language, and it means poke. The third one is chink. I don't know how many of you know that word, especially persons from the younger generations who are probably in their, probably in their 20s. Maybe some persons in their 30s would have heard about it before, but the word chink is from is a part of the word is from the Igbo language and it means bed bug yes it means bed bug it is believed when we were growing up and people talk about chink it is believed that when you have a situation where somebody tend to pee bed a lot it gives rise to these kinds of bed bug and if there's unclean space you might find that it gives rise to these kinds of um these kind of bed bugs and so that is why sometimes again in jamaica you always hear people say you rank like chink yes that was a common statement that people used to say to people who are feisty or people who people them bed they used to say that term to them a lot you rank like chink so the term chink which means bed bug is also one of the words that's directly connected to our african ancestry and it is from the Igbo language. The other one, number four, we are looking at the word nyam. Now, this is a very popular one, so everybody is supposed to know this word nyam. Nyam is a part of the Akan, it's from the Akan language, and we know that it means eat, right? So, that is one of the universal ones that most persons are familiar with, regardless of the, 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 the age group that you find yourselves in. So young children today know it, the persons in their 20s, 30s, 40s, etc. It's one of the common ones that we use. Number five, the term UNU. The term UNU is also from the Igbo language. And of course, it means it's, it's a plural form in the Patwa. So you always hear people come, but Allah UNU, UNU over there, so, a UNU may talk to, you know, so it, it's referring to a group of people not just one person so the word uno is from the african ancestry it's directly related to the african ancestry another one which is number six is the term dundus now i have not heard this term in a long time until i actually came up on this in my research dundus it's a term that we used to use a lot when we were growing up and you had persons who were of a very light, very light, light, light hue, 
the albino um, type looking individuals and so this term dundus is part of the congo language coming out of africa yes and so it was used to describe the albinos the term dundus so whenever you're anywhere you hear somebody say no man my one could dundus then you will understand what it is that they are actually talking about as a matter of fact i only knew the word albino when i got much older in high school because the only word i knew then was the term dundus yes all right so let's look at number seven number seven the word pinda pinda is also a part of the congo language and it means peanuts the first time i heard this word pinda i didn't know what it what 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 it, what it meant when i heard the term I was doing one of Miss Louise Bennett's poem. I was studying it. And I think it was a poem that has, I think it's a poem that's called South Parade Peddler. And it was talking about Pinda Cake. By Pinda Cake. And I was wondering what is Pinda Cake. And I remember going to my grandmother with it and I asked about Pinda Cake. And that's when she explained to me that Pinda meant is, is, is peanuts. When they talk about Pinda Cake, they're talking about a peanut cake. So if you any of you know that poem or you're studying that poem to do at the first JCDC festival or for whatever other reason, and you come across the term Pinda Cake, you know that they are talking about one of those peanut cakes that we always see the man on the road selling. The term Pinda is also coming directly out of our African ancestry. Another term, number eight, we are looking at Abe. Abe. Now, I'm wondering how many of you know Abe. Abe is, is, is also from the Akan language, and it means small coconut seed. Now, I remember when I was growing up, there was a, you had a little coconut seed, and we used to eat it because it tastes like coconut. So we call it Abe. And we'd actually take it, break it, open it, and we would eat it now there's a saying in it in in jamaica when he talks about abe to say that um the junk or can swallow abe seed or else their butt is going to become um cart the abe seed is going to stop them but yes i used to hear that a lot when we were growing up and so what we try to do when we would eat the abe we'll take out the seed out of the abe and we'll throw it one side because we say we want the junk to come down and pick up the abe seed yeah so i don't know how many of you know but i've not seen abe in a long time so i don't even know if it still exists right or it has become one of those things that has become extinct like so many other things within our jamaican culture so if anybody watching and you've seen abe recently just put it in the comment section where you have seen it and how long ago you have seen it or if you know just put it in the comment section let me know that you know exactly what i am talking about number nine we are now going to look at the word potter potter i don't know if you've ever heard that word potter potter and this word potter potter this phrase potter potter is a part of the yoruba language and it means mud potter 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 means mud so when you double it up you're talking about you're using the term muddy muddy and i remember growing up and when i was playing dolly house and we used to put the mud in the pan and mix it to say that we're cooking. Yes, we always say we are mix up potter potter. Right, but because we knew that potter potter meant mud. So we know we were playing and playing in the mud at that time. So I don't know how many of you are quite familiar with that. So put it in the comment section. Let me know that you're quite familiar. And as we're talking about the term potter potter and muddy 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 what i want us to look at is the doubling up of the word this concept of doubling up of word or repeating the word is also very much connected to our african ancestry we use it a lot in jamaica so just like how we are talking about something something too muddy muddy we always talk about somebody too nyami nyami yes and when we talk about nyami nyami we are talking about somebody who, is, who eats a lot or greedy eats everywhere so you say you're too nyami nyami you know you'll talk about the word kuru kuru we talk about that in jamaica we talk about bata bata yes so we double up our words in um here in jamaica and earlier in the last one we look at a word we call it kaba kaba 
that is how sometimes we double up words in, in here in Jamaica or in the Caribbean. That idea of repeating word and doubling up word, it's not a Jamaican thing. It is also something that is directly related to our African ancestry. Now, what are some other terms in Jamaica we use that we double up? So like the muddy muddy and the nyami nyami. What are some other words that you know that we use in Jamaica that we double up? And if you're from another Caribbean island and it's the same way you use words in the Caribbean where you double them up, tell me what are some of those other terms that you use that you also double up within the Caribbean. Now, so far in doing the video, we realize that some of the words are either Akan, language related, Igbo, Yoruba, Fula and Congo and there's a reason for that it is so mixed because remember the slaves who the enslaved who were slaves who were brought here these enslaved individuals all came from different tribes and they came together in this new land and settled here and as they settled here and they started interacting with each other these are the traces and the pieces of them that eventually came together to create for us what we have in Jamaica now as the rich Patwa language that persons across the world have come to love and enjoy it so much. We owe that to our African ancestry. And that is where we have it so mixed up and so many of the different words because all these different people were brought here to the Caribbean. I do trust and hope that you found this video quite useful, quite informative. And so if you believe it was quite informative, just put it in the comment section because we have come to the end of the video. And I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation with you in the comment section where we can continue to learn from each other and learn more about our African ancestry and how that is directly related to the language or the culture here within the Caribbean. Until I make another video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Walk good.